going to be tying up another wet fly from Ray Bergman's trout today. This is the Hawthorne. Very simple pattern. It's a dark pattern. Even the red in this, depending on the tannins in the water, the angle of the light, and so forth, a lot of that red can disappear and turn black. So it's a very, very dark pattern. Great for muddy water, a real off-colored water where a bright fly or something would just kind of disappear. But it's a simple pattern, silk body, red and black hackle for the throat, and black wings. It's a great little wet fly if you're wanting to start into getting into wet flies because there's just not a whole lot to it. And it's a great one to practice your skills on. That's the Hawthorne. I'll get started tying. Begin the Hawthorne with my hook on the vise. This is a must add 33.99 and a size 6. It's a standard wet fly hook. If you do find that you're tying these wet flies and you tend to crowd the eye a little bit, you might try a longer shanked wet fly hook. The Daiichi 1550 is not a bad choice there. After debarbing the hook, I'm going to attach my thread. I'm using a Danville 6 aught in black. The Hawthorne has a black floss body. There is no tip or tag or tail or anything on this, so we can just get away with going ahead with black throughout the whole thing. I've already waxed my thread. I'm going to attach my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to run it down to the end of the shank, just past the point much halfway between the point and the bar. Here I'm going to tie in the floss body. It's a black floss. For this I'm using a uni floss in black. I'm using this because it's a little bit thinner. I just want to have a thin body. You could use the Danville four strand rayon if you want. You could also even double this up. This is just two strands and they are twisted. You could actually spool this up in a bobbin if you want and apply it that way. But I'm using this just to kind of keep a, a much thinner body. You could actually even, if you wanted to, just use like a 210 denier thread for the body and dispense with the floss altogether. Attaching that at the end of the shank, I'll advance my thread for forward to the end of the body here to tie in that floss. I am going to untwist this as I'm tying this in just to flatten it out just a little bit. If you want to leave it so it has a little bit of a kind of a corded look to it, you certainly could. See, it's easy to flatten out. And it just gives it a nice thin body. The hackle on the Hawthorne is a red and black mixed hackle. I'm using some black schloppen as well as some red schloppen. Now often it can be kind of difficult 
in mixing these together. There's a couple of different ways. You could take a couple slips and roll them around in your fingers. That can be a little bit harder. What I find the easiest way is to get each of your black and your red hackles, get the barbs sticking out 90 degrees from the rake so that the tips are even, like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to place one down on top of the other. So I've got both of these placed on top of the others. I want to make certain the tips are fairly even on these. Sometimes you'll have barbs that are different lengths. So you want to try and keep those tips fairly even. Then you're just going to peel all those off together. Now, as I am I'm going to dampen my finger, you could use a little uh, dubbing wax on your fingers if you want. As I bring these together, I've got some that are just a little bit longer. But as I bring these together, I can bring those together and then roll them in my hand a lot easier this way to mix those up just a little bit so I don't have it as distinct red and black. You could also use something that isn't as webby or have, has as many um, barbules on it, like a rooster hackle or something like that. I'm going to bring these right up underneath. I want the tips to go back into the throat, past the point of the hook. Bring that underneath. Secure that. Trim away the excess. I'm going to smooth off the head area here for our wing. The wing is just black. You could use duck if you've got a small hook. I'm using some goose on this one. So I've got a couple of slips uh, cut out for the goose. I'll take each one. I'll match up the tips on those. Peel those off. I want to first make certain I have the tips evened up here. Then I'll make certain that they're the correct width. I have one that's a little narrower, but, but both of them. See, so yeah, the one on your side's a little narrower, but both of them are a little too wide. So I'll take my bodkin, come in here. And I'll strip out enough for my wing. Make certain that your tips are still even. Mine got off just a little bit there. And then we'll tie those in. Now, if you had a tail on here, it would stick out. Just about this far, so you want those tips to go down about halfway down, which is generally just right at the bend of the hook or a little bit further. And if your taste is you want it a little bit longer or shorter, then by all means. Securing that in. We'll take a look at our wing and how it sets. One thing I caution you on is if you are working with dyed material, these black schloppen and these goose wings are dyed black. The black will definitely, the dye comes off on your hands. If you have to wet them or anything like that, I would have a dish sitting by. You can put your fingers in as opposed to flicking your tongue, and then that dye gets off on your tongue. 
little tip there. Number of dyes, the red and purple are also, and I guess it depends on the company and everything, but I find those are the ones that tend to be the worst in that regard. Come down and shape this a little bit more. I'm going to flatten my thread. Put in my whip finish. And put a little bit of head cement on this. That's just to soak down in there, curing that thread. I'll come back in a minute with a couple coats of black lacquer to dress that up a little bit. It will seal it and make it look really nice. But that is the Hawthorne. Simple, elegant little wet fly from Ray Bergman's Trout. Thanks for watching today. Thank you for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned a new pattern, at least a tip or trick here and there. If you'd like to help Dress Irons, you can like, comment, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things for the video. You can also head out to DressedIrons.com where you can buy flies, tools, stickers, and merch. Or you can join a growing community over on Locals at the Dressed Irons Fly Tying Guild. You can also donate to Dressed Irons if you want through the link at the bottom of the description. I thank everybody for their ongoing support as it really does help the creation of these videos. But what's important is to remember, only fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. <music>